Andrew McCart, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I've got to say I'm a huge fan and I'm excited to do this interview with me. I've got former world champion Kelly Pavlik. Kelly, how are you, sir? I'm doing good. Th thanks for having me on. Oh, thanks for being on. I mean, uh, like I saw you over there at the reception. I thought I need to grab this guy for the channel. So I'm v I think it was the Jermaine Taylor fight, the first one, that made me a fan when I watched that fight. Do you ever watch any of your old fights back and like reminisce and ever get that itchy knuckles to come back? Yeah, you know, I, I watch them here and there, uh, you know, or somebody puts them on like social media because yeah, you get a lot of that now this day and age and uh, I go back on and watch them. So it's kind of cool, but, uh, you know, I can't watch too many of them because the people say I'm uh, egotistical. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's, but we're here in Frisco, Texas. Uh, there's a huge, huge fight card happening tomorrow night with, at the Ford Center right behind me. Um, you still a boxing fan? Do you still follow boxing? Are you excited for the card on Saturday night? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, there's a lot of great fights, and I think that Mikey uh, Jesse Vargas fight is going to be a big one. It's an interesting fight. You know, Jesse is a, a big kid, and Mikey's only the second fight at welterweight. He weighed in today at 145. Um, but I think Mikey's skill set can offset the size. So it was really interesting. I mean, I'm a fan of both guys. Obviously, I connect close with the uh, Garcias and training out in Oxnard. And then Jesse, I met him, and he's a super uh, cool guy and fighter. Um, it's going to be an interesting fight. It's going to be an entertaining one too. Can I press you for a winner? I'm, gonna, I'm leaning towards. I got to go with Mikey on that one. Again, um, Jesse got the size, and Jesse's a real ballsy fighter. Uh, Mikey, you know, he's just a, a very smart fighter too. So I think Mikey is going to pull it off. It's going to come down to war of nutrition, and uh, I think Mikey will uh, edge it out. Is it safe for me to stereotype? Obviously, we've got two Mexican. Fighters, Mexican American fighters. Is it safe for me to stereotype that when we see two Mexican fighters go together, we can expect a war? Do you think we can expect a war side tonight? Yeah, you know, uh, Mikey's a, a boxer though, more than a, a brawler. But Mikey also got the, you know, um, the guts, you know, and, and uh, heart. So Mikey, Mikey will make it a fight if he has to. But Mikey's a really skilled, uh, technical fighter, um, and Jesse's a, is a balls to the wall type fighter. So it'll be interesting to see. I mean. I don't know if it'll turn out that way, but it definitely easily can. This is one for Mikey's fighting at 147. Didn't go all too well his first time round against Errol Spence. He's obviously he's up there at 147 again. He came in at 155 pounds, two pounds under the limit, or a pound and a half under the limit. Do you want to see him move back down after this fight, win, lose, or draw? I would like to. I think uh, Mikey could reign for a long time at 140 or forever, as long as he wants to keep fighting. Um, but at the same time, Mikey dares to be great. You know, Mikey got a lot of slack for the Earl Spence fight. And this day and age, it's like a, a fighter can't win. Um, it, you know, it's, they're damned that they do, damned that they don't. Um, my, every, if Mikey don't make that jump and fight guys like Spence, then he's cherry picking. You know what I mean? So, gives the kids the credit. He's a, a four weight division champion. He's uh, the accolades that he's uh, made in boxing is, is great. And if he wants to fight at 147 and fight big names and, and get the challenges, God bless him. I mean, I again, personally, my opinion, I like to see him at 140 and, and dominate that. But Mikey is Mikey, and he's a guy who's at a top, top level fighter, uh, and he's making great money. Mikey can do what he wants to do, you know, and there's a lot of people kind of like bad rapping him on that at 147. And it's like, you know, he, he's the very few fighters do what he does or doing what he's doing. So... Oh, yeah, but overall, I would like to see him at 140. There's a huge card, but there's loads of fights. We've got the Chocolatito fighting our own Cal Yafai. We've got Jay Harris fighting Martinez down at Flyweight for the WBC champion. What's your thoughts on this whole card? Do you think it's obviously value for money that Eddie Hearns put on? I mean, it's a great card top to bottom. Oh, it's, it's action-packed. It's a great card, and it's great for boxing. I'll be here tomorrow early, you know, um, with my podcast covering it which is the punchline with Kelly Pavlik and James Dominguez. And, you know, we'll, we'll cover it, and, and I'm excited. I mean, there's a lot of good fights and, and big fights, and I, I think it's great for boxing. Do you cover many shows with your podcast? Uh, do you oh. go up and down the country? Well, absolutely. Uh, nice following. Um, you know, we're on YouTube. Um, you go to punchline.live, and we're on Facebook. You know, we do Facebook Live, our show. Um, you get a lot of people. You know, we cover – we were at the Mikey Spence fight. We we did Mikey Broner. Um a lot of Lomachenko fights and Kovalev, so we've been doing a lot, you know. Good stuff. Well, you're on YouTube. That means you're in my game. We should be. We should be we're competitors now. You know yeah. that. But our big thing is the social media, like Facebook is our big shot. So, you know, um, it's a boxing, all boxing show, and I'm sure yours is. But, you know, we don't we don't do the advertising for. It, but as far as the social media and getting out there, 
like my buddy, uh, my co-host James, we were laughing about it because he goes, every fight we go to, there's like at least 30 people that come up to me and say, hey, you're James Dominguez. So it's, it's getting out there. You know what I mean? It's um, pretty big. Gary Locke is here. I know that you've, as an old four of yours, uh, an old opponent of yours back in the day. Have you managed to see Gary? Have you seen him about reception? Yeah, it's cool to see him. You know, um, you know. You ha- you've seen him, yeah. Yeah, I seen him a little while ago, and and uh, he came up, and I was getting hit with people, and he was taking pictures or whatnot. Um, here he's a good guy. You know, um, I, I he's training guys now. It's great to see him still involved in the sport and doing what he's doing um, and, and helping out everybody and, and making other fighters. So it's, a, it's another chapter in the sport for him, and it's kind of the same as what I'm doing um, right now. I got a charitable organization. And I got a um, boxing gym that we're going to be opening in the summer, and it's going to benefit the kids. That, you know, under 18 is free, um, and eventually I'll be training pro pro fighters. So that's good. You know, I'm glad for Gary. Is, is that the sort of the path that you want to take now? Obviously, being that you are a former world champion, two-time world champion, you've bought, fought some of the big names in the division uh, in your division back in the day. Is that the plan for you going forward now to train these young kids? Obviously, from the start, amateurs to pros, and then hopefully world champions. Yeah, you know, I definitely want to do that. Um, you know, but I, there's a lot that I got going right now, a lot of big things in the makings. Um, super excited. I, I don't want to talk about it too much because I feel like I jinxed myself. But, um, yeah, you know, so I, I am. I'm all over the place. Um, I will be training guys, and, you know, I'll be having other people there to help because there's going to be times where I can't be there. And in boxing, you know, you need to be there a lot when you're working on certain things. But I got to find the right guys to help that will listen to what I'm doing and pay attention to how I'm training. But yeah, you know, like I said, it's a, another chapter for me in the sport of boxing, and I, I'm looking forward to it. I want to kind of just go back to last Saturday night. We had there's a huge heavyweight fight out in Las Vegas. I was fortunate enough to be out there to cover the fight. Tyson Fury, Wilder. Were you surprised at how that fight ended? Yeah, yeah, I was. You know, um, I'm a huge Fury fan, and uh, I thought he was going to win the fight. Uh, I had him slightly. I, I said, if it goes to the decision, Fury wins. If it don't, then I think Wilder is going to knock him out because. Wilders can't really box that well at all, but you can't doubt the power that he has. I mean, I could rank him up there as one of the all-time heavy, hardest punchers. Um, Fury, when he said he's going to come out and try to stop him early, I was like, no, he's not. That's not going to happen. And you know what he did, though? He came out. He had a, a great game plan, and he executed it, and it was just a great win for him. I think it was great for boxing, especially the heavyweight division now, with, you know, because um, the heavyweights kind of everybody pays attention to. So I think it's awesome, and I hope that the next fight he picks somebody that's good. I hope it's Anthony Joshua or something like that. Just staying on that fight, were you surprised at the sort of comments that Wilder made with reference to costume and uh, saying, to obviously, his coach Mark Breland, that he shouldn't have thrown the towel, he'd rather go out in a shield in the ring. Uh, what, what's your thoughts on, on the whole costume excuse? If I was him, you know, and I'm not saying that maybe something wasn't wrong you know, before the fight, um, but when you say something like the costume is what did it, I think you're just better off not saying anything at all because no matter what you say, the fans and and the media is going to take it and they're going to beat you up over it. So we don't know. I I, I know from experience that sometimes it's not your night, um, but I wouldn't have said that even if it was the case, which I doubt I wouldn't have said that. Um, And as far as the stoppage, I thought it was a great stoppage. I mean, if they would have stopped that fight around earlier, I think it's a good call. You know, I know it's hard for a referee because uh, Wilder hits that hard and he could change that fight with one punch. But at the same time, he was getting beat up in there. You know, he had the broken air drum. You could clearly see his equilibrium was off. Uh, his mouth was bleeding, and he looked drained. So I think they did a good job of stopping it. Who's the number one heavyweight in the world, in your opinion, then? I think Fury. I absolutely think uh, Tyson Fury is the best out there right now. And if he loses, it's going to be him that, you know, why he loses. <clears throat> so I, I, I keep an eye on him. I just hope he, he gets the right fights. Um, we don't want to see, people don't want to see him go back down and take two fights with lesser guys. Um, we want to see him fight Joshua's now. Obviously, being selfish that I am from the UK, Joshua Fury is a fight that we all want to see. Can I press you on? What's your thoughts on that fight, if it gets made? Because obviously, Wilder has the rematch clause in his contract, which it looks like he's going to exercise. So, what's your thoughts on uh, Fury Joshua? I think Fury. Yeah. I just think that he's you know so big and he fights so well for being such a big guy. You know, 6'9 is big. And um, I think his boxing ability and his boxing IQ will help him in that fight. You know, I think he wins that. I think it'll be an easier fight than it was against Wilder. Not the second time. I'm just saying, in general, the matchup I think benefits uh, Fury more than fight Wilder. 
undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. That will be for. Finally, before I let you go, you've obviously there's, there's so much going on. You're probably going to have more media want to talk to you as well. I want to just go back to your career. Is there any fights that you look back on with fondness and sort of like, like I said to you, the fight that got me a, became a Kelly Pavlik fan was a Jermaine Taylor fight. Yeah. That was the, the the fight that made me a Kelly Pavlik fan. Is there any other fights like the Bernard Hopkins or anything like that? These these yeah. fights. Now, you're talking about like big fights. Yeah, yeah. I think the Edison Miranda was one that people kind of forget about uh, due to the fact that. At the time, Edison Miranda was like the monster. Everybody was afraid of him. Uh, HBO and everybody was blowing him up, and he and he did it. He was one of the hardest guys I've ever fought. Um, but you know, nobody gave me a chance in hell to win that fight either. And especially when I said I'm going to go in there and back Edison Miranda, up, nobody did. Thank yeah, you. yeah, exactly. And I, a lot of people on my uh, podcast page mentioned that they said, you know, it was like remind them of me versus Miranda, and I say. That, that fight because I went in there and I did what I said I was going to do and Miranda is a very strong uh, hard punching guy and not only did I back him up but I, I stopped him and I and an ass whooping for seven seven rounds there you go Kelly I like I said absolute pleasure to meet you and thanks for this Fight Fell TV and uh, just one more plug for your podcast oh yeah it's, um, thank you I appreciate it uh, it's you can go to the punchline.live and watch and go to YouTube and subscribe or you can find us on Facebook at the Punchline with Kelly Pavlik and James Dominguez. And uh, it's a very fun show. We sit there. Um, it, it's formatted where it's for all the, the listeners. They ask questions. And our heads are on our phone the entire time answering questions. So it's really fun. And uh, we interact. And it, you got to check it out. Definitely. You heard it here. Check it out, guys. Kelly, like I said, pleasure to meet you. And uh, hopefully I'll catch you around fight night tomorrow night. Thanks so much, Kelly. Thank you.